sometimes, no matter how much you tell yourself, no more vacuum cleaners, you have a look on Facebook one lunch time at work and come home with a non-working, broken, potentially, but definitely not working, SIBO Automatic X1. Our mission today, which we have no choice but to accept, because I'm not having a broken vacuum cleaner lying around. If it's that dead, it can go for scrap to Mr. Manchester Vax and be put to good use. Is to get this working and see what it's like. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner and SIBO loving chums because I know there are a lot of SIBO people out there. How are you today? The SIBO Automatic X1, literally the bread and butter of the SIBO line. They have never been so unpopular. This was £20. I paid a tenner. They are, you, I, you, you just come across them everywhere. Never pay an awful lot for one of these because... They're just not worth it. Doesn't mean that they're not good though. Despite myself and others do feel that they skim the top of the carpet because the automatic just holds it up a little bit. They are dependable. They are reliable. I use one to clean a church on my Christmas Day video. Look back on my channel for that. And yeah, they're just SIBOs. But this one... Apparently, do you know what? I haven't actually turned it on. So we shall twist up the cord hook. You know what? We'll sort this hose out as well because that's no good. I remember it was flying all over the car. Hose isn't broken, it's very filthy. That's fine. We'll drop that back in there. There we go. That's how it's supposed to look. And we'll plug it in. And, yep, it is completely dead, as I thought it was. So the first part of this video is going to be fixing this. Now, these have a couple of very, very common issues. And we're going to go straight to the first one now, which involves taking the handle off and working on it. Now, this is the part where, if I had any sort of reputation I would put it on the line because quite frankly I'm hoping and assuming that it is what we are about to fix that will fix this machine because what you do is hope that the cable is broken as it comes through here so we'll take this screw out we then pull the handle up this SIBO they don't all have two screws this one does so, but that's fine, because we need that off. You put it up and then you can separate the handle like so. And pull it back and hopefully be greeted with a broken cable, which we don't actually seem to have. I've seen them physically blown. You can see where it bends and they physically blow. This one hasn't actually thank you for that so i shall go and get a multimeter we shall probe this cable which is the original flex and see if it's that crikey this video could go anyway now but it does seem that my hunch was correct i've checked the fuse in the plug the fuse is fine if i i took the cables off to make it a bit easier we have continuity ish on the neutral depending on where I move the cable on the live there is nothing at all so I am still going to go with my hunch and to go with my hunch we are going to chop the cable down to there we are then going to undo these two screws here that hold the cable clamp into place and 
and then lift out everything and pop that off. So we have our broken bit of cable because I'm still a little bit intrigued to see what's broken on it or where. What I'm going to try and do is see if I can pull out these inner cables or cut this open to see if we can find the broken wire, which hopefully is in there. But the broken bit actually isn't in the piece that we took out. I have excellent continuity there. However, if I just, and I'm going to twist this together just because it's going to make it easier for me to not have to hold it. There's nothing on the lead still. And of course, I did check this. We can check it again. The fuse is absolutely, and I can get a purchase on it, fine. So the problem is something in this cable is not happy. And I think the only real easy way to do it is going to be to just wire up a new cable. Because it could be anywhere. It could be in here. The pins on the plug are pretty shabby. You know, it could be anything. So I'm going to go get some flex and wire it up. And crikey, we'll see if we can progress this video at all and actually get on to looking at the machine. So thanks to a random Dyson cable actually that I had in the shed for a long time. I think it's from a DC24 going by the plug. Gosh, you're very low. We have a rewired handle so we can drop it back in and push the latch down. Lug it in. And it fires up because the switch was on. These things really blow their motor. It is usually always a switch. And I've left all the detritus from well, fixing it on the floor. So we'll get that cleaned up and then we'll see what it's actually like. very well it's not particularly nice to push let's see what the suction is like that's absolutely fine if we hold this down a fair bit we should get a red light on the cleaner head so all that works well right well we best crack back into a normal first look video really and I'll put my dirty carpet down because from the brief look I had of this one, I put it into the back of the car. It is quite filthy. We'll take the hose out and the wand. And apart from being fairly heavily scratched and worn, as these always are, it works and it's complete. And that's about all you can ask. On the back, we have a crevice tool, fairly used. And... An upholstery tool, also full of fluff, as they always do. The next sensible thing to do is to put my knee on the cleaner head, push the button, and careful not to let it slip out of my hands. Oh, so difficult doing this bit. 
Especially if it hasn't been done in decades and decades and decades. Let's try it for me. There we go. We'll separate the two halves so we can have a better look at both without having to be quite so far back. And we'll start with the bag housing. Because why not? It's not too bad a condition. It's dirty. But I wouldn't say it's scraped up. No, I don't think it has got a bag in it, actually. It has. Oh, and it is a genuine SIBO bag, although an older style paper one. We take out the pre-motor filter. We can see that it is very, very dirty indeed. Incredibly dirty, in fact. And the whole thing is, looking at the date wheels, we have a date of June 1998. So this machine is over 20 years old. Bless it. There we go. Look, in fact, it's only one year younger than my car, which is 1997. Although they, this design, you know, that's just when this was stamped out. The actual design, I don't think, changed through the entire X1 run. Until the X1.1 came along. So we'll pop that to one side. This is where the motor sits. And the first thing that we are going to have a laugh at is the awful state of this. Now this should be yellow. That is black and full of God knows what that's gone through the motor. In fact, if I pick my cleanest finger... We can see that the whole thing is just caked in crud. But again, these like to shed lots of their carbon brushes. I spoke a little while ago about Electrolux doing it during the Electrolux light after video. These do it as well. Let's have a look at the brush roll, which is in okay order. I would say that it, yes, it's getting on a bit. But once it's cleaned up, that'll be perfectly acceptable to use, especially on the machine. That, you know, I'll be selling this quite cheap on Facebook once it's all done. If we go underneath, we have the metal base plate full of scuffs and scratches, as they always are. Now it's time to see if it's clogged, which I don't think it is. We can open up the blockage port there and see that it's quite good. One thing that I do like to do, though, is quickly remove these two screws here. And peel back this bit to actually see that it's not too bad. Sometimes they fill up all in that crevice at the back there, which really isn't very nice. This was not bad. It's certainly utterly disgusting, but... You know, I've seen worse. It came from a house. I think it's had domestic use its entire life. We get quite a lot of SIBOs around my way because I live very close to High Wycombe, which is where the company's UK head office is. There is the ratings plate. 850 watts. SIBO Automatic X1. And it seems to work okay. Let's put this back together. Check with the computer. There it is. Check with the computer does what it needs to do. Now the machine's all back together. I'll just hurt my knee leaning on a screwdriver. And we're going to turn it on and check that the computer should go up. The laser machine, which is doing to its highest point. If I don't decline the machine, which checks the sensor, it will go down. Stop. And then if we can go up. It lifts up very nicely indeed. How does it work? Well. Via a series of sensors. You see... Mr. Dyson claims that his Dyson V11 is the most cutting edge vacuum cleaner because the torque head has the automatic speed control. 
the Dyson Torque Head Automatic Speed Control works exactly the same way as a SIBO one, although the technology has been shrunk down since this and obviously fits in the middle of the brush roll. As the brush roll spins, these are the drive belts. And you can even see the sensor, it's that little red chap there. It measures how fast this is turning and when it detects drag, i.e. when the brush roll hits the carpet and naturally slows down, it knows it's done and it stops. And obviously if you then go onto a deeper pile carpet, there's more drag, it lifts up. Come off the deep pile carpet, it drops down and obviously when you put it up, there is a further sensor there, that there is a magnet and deep down I'm just trying to think of where it is in there somewhere, it's one of those bits on the PCB, the magnet when it's parked lines up, I can't really show you on camera, it's sort of buried back there, that then tells it it's upright, it raises the whole thing up so it's parked and then as soon as you recline the machine break that little connection between the magnet and its sensor it knows it's been reclined and normal service is resumed it's very very filthy this bit is dated may 1998 and whole thing seems to be working very well indeed <laughs> So it isn't new technology, it's tried, tested and proven by SIBO. I think we're the only people that use this sort of you know, drag resistance type of adjustment. Hoover had their acoustic sensor in the air path, just like the Tinko Pure One. That is one of the only good things that that machine has, is its little acoustic sensor. It's all relative, isn't it? It's all marketing rubbish. One day we'll strip the V11 down and see how it works. Why have we got... There we go. So, get this back together and then I guess we'll sub up this before video. So there we are. £10 trash. And via a new cable, we have a £10 disgusting used... But... Still working, you know, if you bought this for £10 and got it in this condition, but working, you know, you could do something with it. Here, well, it is now going to get fully stripped down, fully refurbished, polished, washed, buffed, etc. Reassembled, and we'll come back on the after video and see how this £10 1998 SIBO automatic x1 vacuum cleaner comes out when it's had a bit of the beko 1987 usual treatment there won't be a series of refurb videos on this one although you know if you want to see that we can pick another one up and have a look in the future if you want to follow something to fix yours i will link to my refurb thread on manchester vax below so you can look at that and also they'll sell you any part you want for anything SIBO. In fact, if I'd have told Stuart that this ran and I paid a tenner for it, he'd be knocking me on my door with 50 quid to have it for its motor. But unfortunately, Stuart, not today. This old girl is too good, I think. I shall reserve judgments until I've had it apart to be ripped apart and smashed up for spares. But we'll see. Who knows? It's always a fairly valid plan B. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And I, and this SIBO, will see you soon. Bye bye.